All right, guys, it's been a year since we've had our Kimbo. Yeah, it's been exciting. We've used it quite a bit last summer. And we actually used it a little bit through the winter. So in this video, we're going to tell you some of the key considerations about Kimbo winter performance and things that we've learned. Yep. So we didn't use it a ton this winter and just for short trips. But one of the times that we used it was when we went uh, to the airport and we needed to get there for a really, really early flight. So we got there the night before to camp out. Right, yeah, that was <laughs> exciting. And you know what? We're not the only ones camping in the <laughs> in the parking lot. Yeah, probably yeah. frowned upon or not officially allowed, yeah. but there was a lot of camper vans and a lot of truck campers in there. So that was in December and we it was cold. And the other time that we used the camper or Brian used the camper in the mm -hmm. winter, Yep, when I was skiing up at Keystone. There's a, a couple locations right off the, the, the uh, Highway 6 uh, that several people uh, use to camp uh, just up the hill from Keystone. Uh, that's a nice area and that's completely uh, just on the side of the road. Um, and then, uh, then I stayed in the parking lot at a friend's house. But yeah, we haven't taken any really long trips for the winter. They've so far just been one or two nighters and not constantly living in the camper, just sort of as a place to sleep, which is definitely practical. But we'll talk about our recommendations if you are going to do a longer trip. So let's go inside and look at the heating options for winter. It's a muddy time of year, so <laughs> you got to leave the shoes outside. That's right. Okay, back inside. So one of the things I rec recommend for winterized camping is having a really warm blanket system. Right here, we're, we actually are using a sheepskin because what can happen it really easily is if you're not constantly running heat is that your insides can get pretty cold really fast, especially if it's been several hours since you've been out skiing. Mm -hmm. You know, you come right. in and everything's 45 degrees. Right, You know, or colder. It right. might be even so. colder than that. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to have some kind of insulation from that cold air coming out of the mattress because it's gonna take a while for your heater to heat up the whole area. Right. So, so we're using a sheepskin, which it was totally cozy and warm when we we're uh, at the airport parking lot, right? <laughs> right, because I was thinking it was 20 degrees that night. So yeah, it was, it was chilly. Cold. It was chilly. So an insulating layer, maybe something like a few fleece blankets, like the kind of blankets that really hold a lot of heat. Even a sleeping bag can be right. an, an effective way. We Yeah, so we've got down sleeping bag for the super cold uh, nights. Mm -hmm. So, And we just opened it up so that it's on top. Turning around here to the heater. So it's propane. Uh, it's got a fan that's controlled by our battery pack. Uh, and then the gas, uh, which is you have a low setting and then high setting. There's not a huge difference between the low and the high. So you once you once you've heated, once you've warmed up the camper and then you turn it to low, you're still going to get quite a bit of heat coming out of there, uh, especially with the fan on, uh, starting to blow that heat around mm -hmm. the camper. So um, one thing that um, you need to do is to to try and regulate that temperature is to let some heat out and maybe circulate it around. So if you had like on the bulkhead here, if you had a, another fan that was higher up and you could point it down so that you can then circulate because it, the, it'll, it'll, the heat will stratify, stratify. So you'll have hot up here and then you'll have to be really cold still down at the floor level. So if you had a way to, uh, another fan that could blow the heat down into the floor area, uh, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then the other thing, way to do it is to open up the vent on the ceiling. Uh, there's a max air fan up there. Uh, you can just open, just crack the hatch on it uh, and kind of finagle with it, kind of get it to where, depending on the temperature outside, just how much heat you need to let out um, at a time uh, to make it a relatively constant temperature, comfortable as possible, right? Because you're sleeping high up as well, so you're mm -hmm. gonna have that that hot layer up here right where you're sleeping yeah so. and then you talked about having another option for heating if you had shore power right exactly and so and that this this one works a little bit better because you can get one with a thermostat so just an electric heater so a small electric heater like this one this one uh, oscillates a little bit as well but it's got a thermostat on it 
which is really nice. So you could set it at like 50, I set it at 55 degrees when I was up at Keystone, uh, or maybe even 50 degrees. If you have it, again, if you have it down low where the cold air is, it could be running all the time. Mm -hmm. And your, all your hot air is at the top. I did not have that uh, secondary fan that I was talking about, um, but I do want to get one. Um, so I put it up on top of the refrigerator and then that way it's higher up where the heat mostly is. Mm -hmm. And so it would, it would cycle on and off more frequently. Okay. Uh, and then that way it maintained more of a steady state temperature. It was really nice actually. Cool. So it didn't get too hot and it didn't get too cold. So. Um, you're probably wondering about the snow uh, in the winter time, right? So you right. want to keep that vent clear. So the vent is up here and you don't, you're not going to be able to open that or you're not going to be able to open it without snow coming in if you don't, if you're not clearing that off. All right, so if it's snowing hard and you're camping in it, that might not be an option to open that vent yeah. to let heat out. So you might have to open up a window or something. But people are probably wondering how we're storing it, right? Um, okay. We don't have a gigantic garage for it. We just unload it right up uh, on our driveway here. We've got a nice little space for it. <sighs> Take it off the truck, uh, pull it out, and then we lower the camper down. Mm -hmm. That way you're not getting that uh, the torque from the wind um, pushing the camper uh, on the legs. And then another winter consider consideration I think people might be wondering about is winterization. Is there anything that we have to do to store it for winter or to use it for winter? We don't have any piping in it. We don't have any... No standing water. No right? standing water, so yeah. We don't have to blow out air lines or put antifreeze in the lines like you would on a, a traditional RV mm -hmm. um, or maybe some of the other um, truck campers that have you know running sinks and things like that in it. The battery pack that is the primary source for power, it doesn't charge well when it's really, really cold outside. So if right. you've got single digit temperatures below freezing, you probably want to take your battery inside to charge it before a trip. So it's definitely a winter considered, key consideration for winter is having your battery charging in a warmer environment like indoors yeah. versus outdoors with a shore power hookup. You know, notably, we haven't taken any really long trips with it. So far, we've just taken those single night trips or right. maybe one or two nights where, especially with skiing, you were, you were out doing something, you were right. having dinner out at a restaurant, not right. necessarily cooking and being self-sufficient inside the camper. Not that it couldn't do that, just we don't have any uh, data to share with you on that right, yet. Right. Yeah, that's, that'll be another video down the road when we, we finish the galley area, kind of build mm -hmm. that out the way we want it. We haven't really used the um, heater and the propane as much to tell you how many hours it lasts. You can probably get away with a good three days at least okay. of constantly running it. Okay, so. that's fair. Yeah, we, I mean, people think maybe you're only using it in the winter time, but we definitely used the heater in the summertime when we were camping in the mountains and it was chilly. Those yeah. cool nights and those really chilly mornings, it's nice to turn the heater on before you get out of bed, get dressed and all of that. Yeah. We made a video about a year ago when we first got the camper and our t intentions to finish out the base model of the Kimbo with our own customizations as far as cabinetry and kitchen and bath um, and storage. And, right, and decor, you know. Yeah, we've gotten started, we just haven't finished it. So we're hoping to get to that before next camping season in the summertime, but we'll show you what we've got so far. The easiest thing that we did was adding some cargo netting right above the bed. That's where I kind of like to keep some slippers and socks, um, easy to reach items like remote controls. And just our clothes. I mean, socks, underwear, t-shirts, you know, we don't normally bring a ton of clothing with us. So um, those, it goes right in there perfectly. Yeah, things that are really lightweight and small are perfect for the cargo netting. Now this is the area where you see most customization in the Kimbo, if you've seen other videos of what people have done or you look at their website. Right, so you, you have some additional cabinetry here. Uh, actually, some of the, there's one that comes up on top of here and there's like a little shelf area. So we're gonna, we're gonna make some uh, custom cabinets as well. Uh, we're, we might even move this to the other side so then we can have another sleeping area. So uh, two cabinets will stack on top of each other um, so we could put all our you know additional food or utensils or cups and pots and pans, things like that in there, whatever, whatever we, we come up with um, or even clothing, things like that. Have nice little cubbies that are easily accessible um, and then have it uh, so that it's convertible. So you can then take one of the shelves down, put it here. You could then put another uh, couple pads across so you have an additional sleeping area. 
So if, if, this, if the power unit is on the other side, then you've got plenty of room to sleep again, mm -hmm. have somebody else. Right now, this is like a little uh, cupboard. This is the storage area that comes stock and standard with the, uh, with the Kimbo. Right. So Here we keep our uh, portable uh, toilet in there. Yep. Potty's right underneath. Easy to take out at night and put it on top if we need an emergency bathroom. Right. And then we've got a propane uh, stove in here. Um, and that might eventually get permanently mounted on top of the cabinet for the kitchen area or the galley. A couple of folding chairs, a little electric kettle, dehumidifier. Yep. Yep. So a few odds and ends in here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's a hinged top with a cushion. So that's seating area for, at the moment, but a lot of times we use that for storage, especially from doing the art shows. I end up putting a lot of my Tupperwares filled with my, my art bins right there. But, so, so. Okay, and next? And then the galley area. Now we opted to get our own uh, refrigerator. Uh, this one from Set Power. Uh, is perfect. It fit exactly in the space that we had available. Uh, right now we just have it bungeed in, but it'll get it'll get uh, a bracket that actually holds it in place. Tons of space in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have a countertop that uh, flips up and you can latch it in place so you can easily so you're not using three hands to try and get in there, mm -hmm. um, which will be perfect. There'll be a, a, another countertop over here. And the wood is what you've added so far, right? So you did this. Right. And you might, you might be wondering, well, why'd you add wood? Well, because I'm going to put, uh, this is a, a foam kind of a insulation. Um, it's not super sturdy. I want to put uh, some uh, barn wood on here to make it cozier. Uh, and I'm going to wrap it all the way up to the top. So we'll have barn wood up here to make it, which, so this plywood is so I can attach the barn wood to it. Okay. So... Um, so it'll have, this will be a, like a one separate little room. Uh, countertop over here will be fixed in place. This little wooden thing? Yeah, this is just a, a mounting um, bracket for the countertop. So we'll just mount it right in there. Okay. So this will be a fixed piece and there'll be a separate one that lifts up. So you, okay. Um, so you can always just have some stuff right there. Is that where you're imagining for like the sink area? Or? Yeah, this would be like a sink area potentially. And we Probably could actually even put another one on top, maybe even extend it out just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We need a little bit more space, but okay. that is a nice little shelf there. Yeah. And then the other little bit that we added uh, for storage was just the wire rack. Right, so exactly. just some odds and ends, some food, toiletries and um, utensils. But it's, you know, it's not a lot, but it, it worked the summer, you know, for what we needed it for. Yeah, it's perfect. So, and then in here just have some sort of, some hanging organization we haven't really gotten around to it yet you know just there's a little bit of area for hanging organization um it's another little cubby right in here yeah. but and this is more this this uh material here is more of a waterproofed or water resistant material so if you have wet things uh, as you can see in the camper you've got a separate an area that's kind of separated off from the main area mm -hmm. so um, if you got ski boots and wet boots, things like that, keep it in there. You can pull this uh, board out and wipe it out, clean it all out. So, mm -hmm. right. so the other aspect for winter camping with uh, Kimbo is that like any truck camper or even an RV, you're dealing with having level ground and that's a lot more challenging when you have a lot of snow on the ground. Right. So, uh, you know, one time when we were camping last year, we... Um, the ground was not level and I found some flat rocks to try and level the, the truck out. So, but there's another option to do that as well. Uh, we have our own system now. We have our own system. <laughs> Corey was nice enough to send us out uh, these leveling blocks. And, uh, and so hopefully in the future, I won't be using rocks because it actually took a long time to find rocks. Uh, the, other, the other thing I did in the past was brought a whole bunch of two by sixes. Um, which uh, take up a lot of room as well. So, um, but space is always an issue when you're doing truck camping, right? So you're trying to find the most compact, easy, lightweight. We don't want to bring exactly. in a bunch of lock rocks or wood unnecessarily. You know, it's nice to have an option that's easy to kind of bring along. And um, yeah, and well, they're they're well packaged here. They they stack up real nice. Uh, there's the top plate for it. All the blocks. There's ten of these blocks. Uh, they're about one inch in height and they're stackable. So um, 
You can figure out whatever configuration you need, however high you need to make it. We'll put a link in the video description if you guys want to check it out. Um, they have, Kori is an entire like RV site with lots of supplies. So you'll be able to get a discount through them by using our code. So we'll put that information in the video description, but like, I want to see how it works. So, yeah, let's yeah, do it. Let's get it set up. All right, so we're parked on a pretty good slope right here. Probably need a few inches to get uh, leveled out. So there's different ways that you could do this, you know, depending on how high up you think you could drive up onto. You know, we could just have three or four stacked like this and then drive right up onto it. The other option is to kind of um, stack them oh, in a cool. triangle fashion. So that's cool. that'll give you a little bit of a, a one up like that. And then with the, the top cap. So let's cool. give that a go here. That way you get a little bit of a step up beforehand. Yep. Wow, you're really up there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really imagine you could climb up there so easy. I thought they would break. No, they're super strong. Okay. I think their their capacity is over thousands of pounds. So excellent. You know, you can put big travel trailers on them, things like that. So things okay. that weigh may more than a Tacoma. Okay, because I see how there's a little bit of flex in the bottom. Um, the bottom one right there, but it looks like that's what it's made for. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's our update <sighs> for our winter performance of the Kimbo uh, in just the few trips that we've taken this winter. But we know mm -hmm. where we need to improve and where we might make some adjustments. The modifications to finish up, uh, hopefully this spring, as far as the galley area, that's kind of the, the main area we want to get done uh, before we start uh, using it this summer, which we have got quite a few trips planned with Amy's art shows and such. We like to stay in the Kimbo, it's perfect. Nice little portable shelter on the back of a truck camper and uh, pretty much can go anywhere. That's right, yeah. <laughs> anywhere in Tacoma so, can go, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let us know your questions about the Kimbo and stay tuned for our customizations inside. We hope to get that wrapped up and show you guys how that all works. And uh, thanks again to Corey for sending us the leveling blocks. Definitely check them out if you're looking for RV accessories or just something, uh, what we've got to level out your Kimbo adventure. Yeah, yeah. They work good. It's a small little um, package, so you're not mm -hmm. taking up a lot of room with it. So. Yep. All right, guys. We'll check you next time. Thanks. Hit that thumbs up button. Mm -hmm.